Hello Year 11, this is a short video to remind you what to expect in a part B of the Christmas Carol assessment and to give you a few hints and tips on how to revise for it. So what can you expect in part B of the Christmas Carol assessment? Well the question will always be something along the lines of how is something shown in the rest of the novel? That something will be a theme or big idea that runs all the way through the book. So for example, how is poverty shown in the rest of the novel? How is family life shown in the rest of the novel? How is Christmas shown in the rest of the novel? A theme is a big idea that runs through the whole novel, something that Dickens wants us to take away and think about um, that might relate to our lives as well as the characters in the book, so bigger than the story itself. And notice that you have to show that you know the whole book, not just the extract from part A. So what sort of themes might it ask you about? Here's a short list of some of the themes and ideas that run through A Christmas Carol. You might want to shop, pause the video here and jot down this little list and that could be a start of um, some revision for you. You might be able to think of other ideas that run through the novel. You might find others in study guides or um, as you look on the internet. As you start to think about these ideas, you'll notice that they overlap with one another. For example, social responsibility could be said to be the flip side of greed. Uh, or um, po uh, poverty and education begin to link together because Dickens saw that education was a way out of poverty. And so as you prepare um, some of these different themes, you might realise that you're using the same quotes again and again, and that will help you to, to identify which quotes are going to be useful for you to learn. So what do you need to write about? Well, if we look at the mark scheme, uh, you'll notice that it, it is asking you to have a personal response to the text. Um, so down here uh, at lower level, it's saying that it's largely narrative, so that's retelling the story. So we want to go beyond just retelling the story and we want to push up here into where it talks about interpretation. So you're interpreting the text. You're saying, why are those little stories in there? Why are those characters in there? Why has that incident happened? And um, what does it mean to me? What did it mean to the Victorian people? And uh, notice the reference as well to being soundly related to the text or with support from the text and higher up well-chosen references to the text means quotes. So really helpful if you can learn some quotes, bring some quotes in here, even if you don't remember them exactly word for word, but trying to paraphrase them um, and remember as much detail as you can. One way that you could revise is to prepare uh, plans for the different uh, themes that you can um, think of in the, in the book. Um, this is one way that I've, I, I would maybe plan. Um, so I've drawn out a grid here um, and I'm going to try and think of three, uh, at least three, if um, four would be better, three different parts of the novel that um, relate to that theme, a quote for each one and trying to think why Dickens, interpreting why Dickens has put that bit in there and what it tells us. So why don't you pause the video now and try a quick plan on the theme of poverty. So try and think of three or four different parts of the novel that you would point to about poverty. So you might start, for example, with a mention of the charity workers in Stave One, the charity collectors who come around and ask uh, Scrooge for some money and maybe first brings up that theme of the poor. What quote could you use for them? And how will that allow you to talk about what Dickens is showing Scrooge or us or the Victorian people? It might be something that links forward to later in the text for Scrooge or some way that it um, relates back before. Or maybe there's a universal truth that he's showing to all readers. So even a modern reader can learn that we should look after uh, the poor members of our society or that we should learn that maybe uh, money doesn't buy us happiness um, and uh, through the Cratchit family, for example. So pause the video and try a quick plan uh, on the theme of poverty. Here is my plan. Um, so I would start off by looking at the Cratchit family. Uh, I, I know a few different quotes for them. So um, I've got a few choices of the kind of detail I'm going to bring in. Um, and really, I'm trying to think, why is Dickens showing us that family? Well, it's all very well to talk about the poor as a sort of mass of, 
of people as Dickens thinks, as Scrooge thinks of them in the first stave. Um, but to to get uh, stop and get to know a family like this um, in the novel allows us uh, Dickens to put a face to poverty, which really adds pathos and a lot more empathy into the, the text. And I think Dickens is trying to teach everybody a universal truth that you can be happy, perhaps even happier without money if you've got family love. Then I might look at ignorance and want um, and look at how horrifically they're described and point out that um, children represent the future. So Dickens is giving a warning that if we don't do something about poverty, it's going to be uh, bleak for the future. Remember that word doom that's written on the boy's uh, forehead. Um, we might look then in, in paragraph three at uh, Old Joe's, which is where the thieves brought Scrooge's possessions to, uh, to sell them. Um, and look at what Dickens is showing us about the corrupting nature of poverty. And then maybe as a contrast to look at the little boy at the end of the novel, um, we might point back to the, the carol singer that Scrooge treated badly at the start in stave one um, and contrast that to his delight in this uh, little boy and his generosity to him. Is Dickens perhaps instructing his richer readers that they could help to point a way out of poverty, signaling hope uh, if we have a social conscience? You could uh, uh, do some more plans like this for the different themes that I mentioned at the start of the video, uh, just listing them on a page or uh, drawing out a grid like this one. And as I said, you'll start to see how you might use similar quotes for different uh, themes um, and so know which ones that you could learn. Here are a few example paragraphs from a top band uh, answer. I'll give you, you could pause the video and uh, have a read through that. Just notice as you read through it, the level of detail that they remember about the text, the use of uh, short quotes that they've remembered. Um, and notice how each paragraph finishes with interpretation. So each paragraph finishes with a mention of uh, either Dickens, what he is trying to do to highlight the problem, um, or um, uh, the reader's response, what they take away, maybe a shock to the readers, what a reader, how a reader responds or how a reader interprets that idea. Try out a few plans of different themes. Notice where you're using the same quotes and have learned learn those quotes. And you could also practice the final sentence of paragraphs using the critical verbs that show that you're um, using, uh, creating a critical interpretation of the text. So always trying to finish a paragraph with uh, words like Dickens criticizes, Dickens is exposing, Dickens is teaching, Dickens is highlighting, or finishing with a reader response. The reader realizes, the reader sees, the reader understands. <laughs>